animation catches attention and can literally make your website content pop or come alive. In this tutorial, we will look at how easy it is to create a simple bouncing arrow. We will also learn about the transform and keyframes property. To create our arrow, we will use pure HTML. HTMLarrows.com slash arrows has a comprehensive list of symbols and their HTML codes, which work the same across all browsers. We can pick the down dashed arrow, but I'd like to show you the power of the transform property. So we'll pick the right dashed arrow for our example. If we copy paste the code into our editor, you'll see the arrow rendered. Let's change its size and position so we can see it clearly. We'll give the right dashed arrow a class of arrow. Then we'll give it its styles. Since this is only HTML code, we can use the font properties to influence its style. Let's apply the transform property. The transform property can take several values. We will use the rotate value. If we rotate 90 degrees, we'll see the arrow rotating 90 degrees clockwise. For anti-clockwise, simply put a minus or negative sign in front. Now for the fun part. To animate or move the object, we use a special property called at keyframes with an S at the end. Each at keyframes property requires a unique name. Let's call ours bounce arrow, but you can give it any name you like. I'll explain this in more detail in just a minute. Coming back to our arrow class, insert the property called animation. Animation property takes three values. First is the name of the animation, which in this case is bounce arrow. Now the animation is linked to the at keyframes property. The second value is the time for the animation to happen over. And third is the number of times you want the animation to run. We want our arrow to keep bouncing, so we can set the number to infinite. Once the arrow class has its animation value set, we want to tell the at keyframes property what we want to move and how we want to move it through a loop that is starting at 0% and ending at 100%. Because it's a loop, we want the 0% values and the 100% values to be the same. The 50% value will be halfway through the loop. Therefore, 0% will be at 0 pixels from the top and 100% will also be at 0 pixels from the top. 50% will be 20 pixels from the top, moving the arrow down. And since we are affecting the top property, we need to set the position of the arrow class to relative. And that's all there is to it. Run your code in the browser, and there you have your effect. To really see what's going on, let's change the infinite value to just three cycles or three loops. The arrow only bounces three times. If we change that number to 10, can you guess what will happen? The arrow will bounce 10 times. The at keyframes takes its orders from the animation property via the unique name we give, in this case, bounce arrow. You can give it any name you like. What happens if we change the time it takes for the animation to complete one full loop? that is from 0% all the way through to 100%. If we make the time 10 seconds, the animation is going to take 10 seconds to complete one full cycle from 0% to 100%. In other words, the arrow will take 10 seconds to move down 20 pixels and back up again to where it started. A smaller time value speeds up the animation. The choice is entirely yours. In this case, We'd like it to look more graceful, so we'll use one second. So far, we've just been animating the top position, but you can animate almost any CSS property. Let's say I not only want the arrow to bounce, but I also want it to change color. 
So let's set the initial color of the arrow in the arrow class yellow. But when the arrow moves to the bottom, we want it to be black. To achieve this, we simply insert the color property into the 50% keyframe, just as you would with regular CSS. There are a lot of stylistic possibilities and combinations with size, position, shape and so on. So go ahead and experiment. The code for this tutorial is in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and CSSU next time.